Hello and welcome back. Now that we know what is the difference between event time and processing time and how we can use those for our stateful processing, let's understand different type of windows that are available for streaming operations. These windows are useful for group aggregation. Today we will look into three type of windows. The first one is tumbling or fixed window. The second one is sliding or overlapping windows and the third one is session window. Today we will cover the basics about this window and we will understand them in theory. In the next session we will write our code for this window operations. Now before we begin, if you have not seen our previous videos, I would recommend you to go back and watch our playlist from the beginning. So without any delay, let's begin. First type of window that we are going to understand is tumbling window. Tumbling windows are also known as fixed window. The reason is the size of the window will remain same throughout the processing and there will be no overlapping of windows. Now on my screen you can see processing time. Processing time at row number 6 is the time when we are processing the data. Now for our example the window size will remain constant and is 10 minutes. You can see W1, W2, W3 and W4 as 4 of the windows which are defined. Now in row number 8 you can see the events with the event time that are flowing and for our example the trigger time is 5 minutes. It means our trigger will happen for the job at every 5 minutes. So our trigger will start at 12.05 and it will continue for each of the 5 minutes. And in the bottom you can see the result data frame that will be created as per the group aggregations that happens for the word count for our events. So let's consider we have our first event flowing at 12.03 with the value as owl dog. Since our first event trigger will happen at 12.05, you can see the values for that window 12 to 12.10 with the value of owl as 1 and dog as 1. Our next trigger will happen at 12.10. Once this trigger happens, it will process the data which has flown between 12.05 to 12.10. So we have only one record at 12.07 which is dog. So the value for dog will get updated to 2. Now again we get one more record at 12.11 but now the window has changed. We have our previous window locked so there is no change for the window 1 and we will have our window 2 values getting updated now. So you can see the second window at 12.10 to 12.20 which will get processed at 12.15 and the values for owl and dog which is owl as 2 and dog as 1. Now since we do not have any data for 12.15 to 12.20 so when the trigger happens at 12.20 there will be no change in the data frame. Now we get one more event at 12.22 which contains a value of owl. So when the next trigger happens at 12.25, the values for the previous window which is 12.10 to 12.20 will not change but we will have our new window W3 at 12.20 to 12.30 with the value of OWL as 1. Now you can understand this tumbling window is pretty simple and pretty easy to understand. And the values will only get updated for those particular windows when the events are arriving. Let's see the next type of window which is sliding window or overlapping windows. Now sliding windows are also known as overlapping windows because if you see on my screen the windows overlap each other for some duration of time. For this example we again have the processing time at row number 6 that you can see we have 4 windows W1, W2, W3 and W4 and each one of them is of fixed size of 10 minutes but the sliding window is 5 minutes. It means they will overlap each other for 5 minutes. You can see this W1 and W2 they are overlapping from 12.05 to 12.10. So the overlapping duration is 5 minutes and the window size is 10 minutes. Again we have the same input data that is coming with event time and our trigger time still remains at 5 minutes. And we have the resultant data frames mentioned here. Let's understand sliding window with the examples. So consider our first event arrives at 12.03 with the value of owl and dog. Now the trigger happens at 12.05. So the value of that window W1 will get processed from 12 to 12.10 for owl as 1 and dog as 1. Now we get one more event at 12.07. Now in this case we have two windows that will be processed W1 and W2. In this case you can see the values for W1 is getting updated. You can see the dog as 2 but we are getting one more record for the window 2 because this 12.07 also comes into window 2. So we have one more value where the window size is from 12.05 to 12.015 and the dog value is 1. Next consider we have one more value coming at 12.11. Now in case of 12.11 you can see the overlapping windows are W2 and W3. So the values for window 1 will not change but the values of window 2 and window 3 will get changed. For window 2 you can see the values for dog becomes 2 owl becomes 2 and for window 3 we get two new records where the dog should be 1 and the owl should be 2 because for 12.10 to 12.5 we have only two owls and one dog so the value for dog will be 1 and owl will be 2. Now let's consider one late scenario. Consider a record which was generated at 12.04 arrives at some duration in between 12.15 to 12.20 and we get one more genuine event of 12.17 as owl. So we have two records. One is late process record which is marked in red and one is genuine record. Now since the event time for this record is 12.04 so the window that will get updated for dog is from 12 to 12.10 and dog as 3. And this value for 12.17 the value will get added into one window which is W4 and another window which is W3. For that case the owl would be 3 and dog will still be 1. 
So now you see the importance of event time here. The event time will update the correct corresponding window which is required. Now in this case you can understand even at 1220 Spark has to keep all of this aggregations in its memory in order to update the window which was from 12 to 1210. But consider this event arrives a little more late. For example, the next day. Is it possible for Spark to keep all these aggregations in its memory? No. This is why we need to use watermarks. Consider we define watermark as 10 minute. Now, if the watermark is defined as 10 minute, it implies whatever is the latest event that we get. So at 12.20, the latest event we get is 12.17. So we can deduce that amount of time from event time. It means the event which is greater than at 12.07 will only get processed. So if we get any event at 12.04 coming in at 12.20 will not get processed. But if this event was generated at 12.08 and it comes here, it will get processed because the watermark says 12.17 minus 10 minutes which becomes 12.07. Any event greater than 12.07 will get processed at 12.20. And this is how the watermark works for Spark Streaming. And this we will see with an example in our next session. So if any watermark is not defined, Spark has to keep all the aggregations in its memory and it will become very challenging if the aggregations grows in size and you get millions and millions of events for processing. So it is always important to define watermark if you are doing aggregations and if you have a late arriving scenario. The third and the final type of window that we are going to discuss are session windows. Now session windows are very useful where you don't have a fixed size window. Consider example in a website when a user logs in and do some activity or some events. So you are continuously getting events, but the user does not do any activity for five minutes. You terminate that session after five minutes. So if our session gap is five minutes, so consider the events are happening continuously. You see this orange marks as these are the events. So consider the last event happened at 12.09. So the session will automatically get terminated at 12.14 because the last event was 12.09 plus five minutes at 12.14. Similarly, consider another user logs in and makes an event at 12.15. The session, if there is no event after 12.15, the session will automatically get terminated at 12.20. And this is how session windows are important because they do not have any fixed size, but you have to define a gap after which you have to terminate that window for your calculations. I hope you understood all the three types of windows that we looked into. In our next session, we will write the code for this window operations in Spark Streaming. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.